This is the start of the video for experiment number five, the steam distillation of clove oil. The first thing I'm going to do is grind up some cloves. So here are some cloves, literally from the grocery store. I'm going to put some in my mortar and pestle. And I'm going to coarsely grind them. Now, as you can see, that's a coarse grind. Okay. I'm now going to go weigh out approximately one gram of the ground cloves. Now I'm going to add my cloves to my 10 milliliter round bottom flask. Okay. I'm now going to add approximately four to five milliliters of deionized water to that round bottom flask. I've set up this simple apparatus to actually degas my clothes. So I've connected up this vacuum line to my thermometer connector to my air condenser and I'm gonna hook my round bottom flask up to that and then turn on the vacuum. This actually helps the system degas a little bit before we start the reflux. So as we pull vacuum on this it tends to froth a little bit. We're going to leave the vacuum on for a little while and then we're going to connect this round bottom flask up to our reflux apparatus.
This is the notebook page for the first part of the experiment where we prepare the sample. I have all kinds of things set up here in my hood. I have a hot plate stirrer. I have a heating block. I've set it up with my Hickman still and my water jacketed condenser. I also have here a conical test tube which I've marked six and eight milliliters on because I'm going to be removing distillate as it collects in my Hickman still and I'm going to place it in my test tube. I'm going to use this pasture pipette to do it and I've labeled it oil. As I remove liquid as it distills up into the Hickman still, I'm going to replace that water with this pasture pipette and therefore I have some water heating here in the back. I've gone and I've taken my clothes off my vacuum system there. I've capped them. I'm now going to add to that my stir rod and connect it up to my Hickman still. I'm going to turn the water on to my water jacketed condenser and then I will lower the whole apparatus down into my heat transfer block and turn up the temperature to approximately 200 degrees C. So what's going to happen is I'm going to distill water and as that water comes up it's going to drag some of the essential oil up also and condense down and collect in my Hickman still. At that point I'm going to take my pasture pipette, stick it down in the sidearm and remove it and put it into my conical test tube and then get some water and replace that amount of water down through the top. So let's just sit back now and wait for it to start to boil. I can now see that some liquid has collected in my Hickman still. So I'm going to attempt to remove that by taking off the cap of my sidearm flask, sticking in my pasture pipette, and sure enough, there's some liquid. I'm going to put that in my conical test tube here. Now that I've done that, I'm also going to replace that volume of water using my DI water pasture pipette 
and sticking it right down the center here and dripping it right down into my round bottom flask. And then we're waiting, going to wait again until I get more liquid collected from the vapors in my Hickman still. I'm now going to remove some more of the distillate from my sidearm port here. and then replace a little bit of the water also with approximately the same amount right down the center and then we'll continue to uh, distill our material We're going to now remove some more. This will be the third time that we've removed our distillate from our Hickman still. going to remove the distillate for the fourth time.
it's been about two hours now, so it's taken a long time to collect this material. But I can start to see oils in the bottom of my canonical flask. I'm just going to bring that up and hopefully it'll focus on there. This is a close-up view of my test tube and you can see there's sort of a oily bubble at the bottom. That is my essential oils. Well, it's been about four hours now since we started distilling our clove mixture. Now this is going to be my last sampling here. And that's going to get us up to just about six milliliters of liquid removed during the process. Now I'm going to turn off the heat and I'm going to raise the apparatus off to let it cool. And then we'll start processing essential oils that we've collected in the next step. This is my notebook page for the steam distillation portion of this experiment. Well, I've cleared a few things out of the way and I've brought in some more things. So right now, I have brought in a new clean, dry conical test tube. I have brought in some dichloromethane or methylene chloride. I've taken nine milliliters of that and put in my graduated cylinder. Now I'm going to actually put some of that methylene chloride into my Hickman still just to extract any more essential oils that might still be down in there. So I'm going to remove the sidearm cap. I'm going to take approximately one milliliter of the methylene chloride. And I'm going to put it down in there into the Hickman still. It's going to solvate any essential oils that might be in there. And then I'm going to remove those and put them in my second conical test tube. And put that in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add methylene chloride in three separate aliquots 
and extract any of the oils that might be dissolved in my aqueous layer or that are separated down to the bottom of my aqueous layer. So I'm going to remove the cap. I'm going to add approximately two milliliters of methylene chloride. I'm going to put on the cap and I'm going to mix that up. And then I'm going to let that separate into two layers for a while so that I can remove the methylene chloride layer and combine it with the one milliliter of methylene chloride that I've already put in the second test tube. Now I'm going to carefully remove the methylene chloride layer which would be on the bottom because it's more dense than water. This is one of the few organic molecules that's more dense because it contains chlorines. So I'm going to go down to the bottom Add that to my methylene chloride layer. Go down to the bottom. Add my methylene chloride layer. Okay. Now I'm going to add and do that one more time. Put my cap back on, mix those two layers up, and allow them to sit and separate for a while. Okay, those two layers have separated. I'm now going to remove my bottom methylene chloride layer. And now we're going to do it a third time. So I'm going to add some more methylene chloride. Put the cap on. Mix it up well. and then let it set for a while so the two layers can separate. And now I'm going to remove the cap and transfer my methylene chloride over to my second test tube. So let's now review what's in these test tubes. This test tube is my aqueous layer, so it contains any soluble aqueous compound. This layer here contains methylene chloride and our essential oils that we dissolved in the methylene chloride. This also might contain a little bit of water that I transferred over, so now I'm going to dry it in the same methodology that we did before using some sodium sulfate to dry this compound. Here's my sodium sulfate. I'm going to actually take my small scupula 
and adds them directly into that test tube. And I'm going to mix that up a little bit. You can see it's sort of formed, if you could see that, sort of a blob down at the bottom, which means it's absorbing water. So I'm going to add some more. and shake it up. And now when I shake it up, I know it's hard to see, but I have some that is not sticking and becoming a blob, which implies that there is removed all the water now from my product. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer that material over to a pre-weighed vial. So I pre-weighed a vial and now I'm going to transfer material over from my test tube over to that vial, working carefully not to transfer any of the solid sodium sulfate over. There we go. So now, in this vial, I have methylene chloride and I have my essential oils and I no longer have any water in there. Now to isolate my essential oils, I just need to evaporate off the methylene chloride. Here is the notebook page for my extraction and my drying with sodium sulfate. I've set up a hot water bath on my hot plate. I've immersed my vial into that. The temperature is approximately 50 degrees C. That is hot enough to actually volatilize and evaporate the methylene chloride from my sample, but not hot enough to actually volatilize the essential oils. It looks like all of the methylene chloride is evaporated, so I'm going to raise my vial out of the hot water bath. 
I'm going to remove my vial, put on the cap. Then I'm going to dry the outside of the vial. And I can see that there is still some liquid down at the bottom that has not evaporated and that would be my essential oils. I'm now going to go weigh this vial so we can calculate how much essential oils we isolated. I've now taken my sample over to the infrared spectrometer. Here we have the infrared spectrometer with an 8TR attachment, attenuated total reflectance. Over on my right hand side here is the computer controlling that and I've brought up the infrared spectrometer software. The first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to collect a background spectrum so we can subtract that off from our sample spectrum. The reason we take a background spectrum is because there are gases in the air, there's water in the air, which also have infrared transitions, so we must subtract those off. So now I'm collecting 16 average scans and there's the first one. And now it's going to be collecting more scans and then averaging the data. You can see there are transitions here. A lot of transitions. A big one and some smaller ones. All these are due to gases and water in the atmosphere. Now, we're going to place some of our sample on top of the anvil here, lower down the head, and we'll take a actual spectrum of our essential oils. So now I'm ready to put my sample down on top of my anvil. I have a pasture pipette again and my sample. I'm going to open that up take a small amount out. That's one advantage of using the ATR system is I don't need much material. So I can put some right down on the anvil, lower down the head and tighten it. This is a close-up view of the sample area. And then I can start my program and start collecting data. And there's my first set of data coming off the system there. Okay. And there's our final spectrum. I will now save that as a PDF file and include that as part of the lab material on Blackboard. This is the final spectra. I've added some grid lines to help identify the wave number for the peaks.
I've blown the spectrum up so you can have a better definition of the peaks above 1800 wave numbers. I've also added grid lines to that spectrum. And here is the final notebook page in my lab book.